everybody and welcome to the Witty Writers Show. I'm Beth Wersdale, author. It's a beautiful Thursday where I am and I'm so happy because I'm here with the fantastic Andy Slinger. Hello, darling. Hello. Pleased to be here. Thank you. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this all day, Andy, because you're a fellow That's Brit like me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we were saying before we came live, um, you actually live not far away from where I used to live in Manchester in England, yeah. um, where I moved with my family. Um, but my my Man Manchester accent, my Mancunian accent, as we call it, has long gone. I, I don't think it was ever there. I think you definitely got that southern southern accent born um, and bred, aren't you? <laughs> I, I sound like a northern monkey, as my husband would say, because my husband's <laughs> southerner. Uh, and he still calls me Northern Monkey occasionally when I come out with something after speaking to my family. Um, but I had a thick Mancunian accent. <laughs> it was really bad. It was. <laughs> but the weird thing is, isn't it, when you speak to family members, um, it just all comes flooding back. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does, yeah. definitely. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So so for those who are who have joined us, we've already got people piling in, which is fantastic. So whereabouts are you in England? I'm from uh, Clitheroe, Lancashire, northwest England. So, yeah, I'm a northern monkey, as you say. <laughs> I won't tell you what I replied to my husband. <laughs> no, southern something. <laughs> southern, well, we say southern fairies up here, so <laughs> yeah, it's that's the polite point. way. Exactly. <laughs> now everybody who's watching welcome 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 please shoot us a message say hello and if you've got any messages and questions for andy please pop them up because i will show them on the screen now i'm so thrilled for you andy because you you are a children's book author and they're graphic novels aren't they yeah are they classed as graphic novels uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of like middle grade books more than anything. Uh, you know, mid middle grade sort of superhero fiction books. That, so that's how I class it. It's so <laughs> fantastic. Could you possibly hold it up so we can have a look? Because of course you can. Uh, that's that's my first book. Look at that. The Super Twins. That's it. Yeah. I. Do you know what? I love the cover and, and I love everything about the book because it's so engaging and bright and colorful and just yeah. it, it just draws children in now obviously i've researched you and i know all about you but for those who who don't um so your books have they been inspired by your own twins yeah they, they were definitely my initial inspiration um you know i wanted to do something that they could have on the shelf for the rest of their lives um you know, I would say the characters are unrelated to them. Um, you know, one's got super strength and uh, one's super intelligent. So I couldn't, I couldn't tell my boys that one was more intelligent or stronger than the other. So we'll keep that one quiet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they were my initial inspiration and, and my reason for starting off writing the book in the first place, definitely. I mean, it, it developed into something completely different. But, you know, initially, that's where it all came from. That's just yeah. amazing. So, so what happened to spark you into creating a book in the first place? Was it the boys or was it something else? Um, I think for me, it was just a, a moment in my life where I thought, you know, I wanted to do something a bit different. Um, and I spent a lot of time on sort of self-development, reading, you know, every, every kind of self-development book under the sun. Um, and I so it took me back to my childhood when I thought, you know, what was it that I really enjoyed as a child that um, really sparked my interest and got me into that sort of, you know, that zone. Uh, and it was writing. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I'll just start writing a book. And, and that was it. <laughs> I haven't looked back since. It's just amazing, isn't it? It's amazing yeah. how life events and, and situations can just trigger a completely new path. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Um, we've got. Oh, <laughs> I'm laughing already, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy says hi from a southern fairy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Andy, have you got any plans to write a book with a female lead character? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, I haven't at the moment. 
However, the Super Twins 2 does have um, a strong female character right in the middle of it. So if you see the new cover, uh, we've got a, a new character called Layla who's right in the middle of the Super Twins. So, um, yeah, the, the answer is it's already been written. <laughs> oh, how exciting. And, and was that sort of based on a friend of your of, of your boys or just completely fictional? Completely fictional. Um, I think, you know, I, I just wanted – my first book was, you know, predominantly male – orientated i think that there wasn't many female characters involved so i just wanted to add a bit of something different in there um and just shake it up a bit with the twins see how they'd react in that situation yeah yeah well i, I think your 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 books are perfectly timed i mean when you think about it you've got marvel that's blown up dc yeah. that's blown up but you know in the movies and obviously that's creates a whole new surge and interest in 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 superhero literature as well so yeah. you couldn't have timed it any better really could you to be yeah, honest so with you. There, there is an absolutely huge market out there it really is there yeah really is. there really yeah. is I, 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 it's it swings and roundabouts isn't there because there's yeah. a, a regeneration in the market but then there's mm. A lot more competition than there was before <laughs> yeah there, there really is there it is you know it's trying to do something different it's difficult isn't it yeah 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 it really is i i love the fact that your your boys have you know obviously have input in what you're doing and and yeah. i've read um that they've been quite vocal about you know what superpowers would be cool and what would oh it. yeah yeah absolutely if, if i'm ever stuck for for where the plot's going to go to, I'll, I'll just go on a walk with them and you know ask them what, what they think should happen next. And, and chances are that's what get used in the book. You know, take it from the kids. If it's books for kids, then you know kids have got ideas that you wouldn't even think of. They're brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know what? I absolutely agree with you. I mean, it, it is like having like a younger version of Google really in your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, and and not only that, kids are so. Um, normally so honest at that age yeah. they just yeah. say what they're feeling or say what they're thinking so i mean what great information for you i mean that's that's priceless yeah absolutely it's, it's like i always remember the first time i sat down and read the first book with them you know uh and gearing their reaction and their honest reaction they were laughing all the way through it which was you know exactly what i wanted um and they're still to read the second one they, they've you know they've got a few ideas about what's in it but I like to wait until the actual book's in my hands and then we'll sit down and read it together. So their reaction, hopefully, will be a good one this time. That's so cute. Right, now, listen, you've got to be honest with me now, Andy. Yeah. Are you one of those parents, when you read books, when they were little, yeah. did you do the voices? Of course I did. <laughs> you, you, you're not a true parent if you don't do the voices. Come on. I know, right? <laughs> My kids used to love that. They'd be in bed like <laughs> giggling away. <laughs> That's all part of the fun. Uh, we've got some more comments here, so please keep okay. coming and any questions you may have. Um, Leah Anna from Australia, she says, good morning from Australia. Um, and she's even put a little kangaroo in the comments. Which Fantastic. Think, That's so cute. Um, Leanna is a book blogger, and she's also um, a writer as well. She's in the process of writing her own books um and on that note everybody if you are an author at any level um please go and check out mine and autumn's new book group for authors which is called write better author smarter where you get lots of tips and advice and stuff um and obviously we'll be sharing the interview on there as well so hopefully that's just that's gone live with a bit of luck um we've also got josephine who's also in England. She's fabulous. She says, good evening. So we're honoured because she stayed up for us as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had two coffees before we came on air. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I'm one of those people I can drink coffee any time of the day, even yeah. just before I go to bed. I, can oh, I won't sleep. <laughs> oh, no, I'm gone. I am gone. Nothing wakes me up. I can sleep, sleep like the dead, literally. Um, now... I've got to tell you, Andy, I was so super impressed by the reviews that your first book has received, the one you mm. held up, if you can show us again. Yeah, uh, of course. Because this is The Super Twins, um, and the reviews are fantastic. I mean, 
you couldn't have more high praise. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, the parents seem to be loving the book just as much as the kids. Yeah. Um, with, I mean, what a compliment that is. That's absolutely no, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's just fantastic. I mean, I, I never expected that from my first book, you know. Um, obviously, I, I did my best. Um, but, yeah, you never expect to, it to do as well as it has done. You know, I got far, to the final of the Wishing Shelf Book Awards, which was, you know, amazing. Wow. So, yeah, really pleased. That's just amazing. Now, you've already done book two, and it's... 24th of April. 24th of April. <laughs> On the verge of releasing it, so 24th of April yeah. is going to be the second one coming out. I, I know, yeah. I guarantee everybody who's already got book one is on tender hooks waiting for it to come out. Uh, as I said, that the, the reviews are amazing. Now, I did read that in your books, even though they're fun and, and, and engaging and everything else, you do put in some hard hitting topics in there as well. Um, and what sort of what sort of things do you bring up and, 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 you know, introduce to kids? Yeah. I mean, for me, the idea of like dysfunctional family is, is a key element to it. You know, in the first book, the, the twins lose the mother, uh, they have to move into with the father, uh, which is something that not used to. Um, and yeah, they, they've had, so they've had it tough. They've had it tough. Uh, you know, that there's a, a big accident that happens quite early on in the book and, you know, you, you feel sorry for them. It's bad. It's a bad situation. You know, they've been they've been brought up on junk food and uh, you know not 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 really a good lifestyle. So you know, it's their journey from going from that uh, and showing them that they you know they can do anything with their life um, and and they can be become whoever they want to be uh, and that family is not not as you know as like 2.4 children and you know mum and dad it's it, it can be completely different to different people so i try to normalize that subject for kids uh because you know in today today's day and age it's 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 all too common that you know kids are, are brought up in different ways so you know those are the kind of things that i want to address in my books as well as making it fun and exciting and having a laugh along the way you know I think that's fantastic because, as you said, I mean, in today's society, as you, you know, as you quite rightly just mentioned, you know, there are more and more separated families yeah. um, in, in so many different forms. Um, and, it, and I think your books are fantastic because it's going to make those children realise that they aren't alone. They're not yeah. alone in that situation. They're not alone in feeling the way they do. Um, and I think many adults forget that children do go through a grief process yeah. when a family breaks up. They go through just as strong a grief process as an adult does, mm. uh, sometimes even more so because, you know, they, sometimes they think it's because of them. Um, so so your book is so enlightening for children. I think it, it's just absolutely wonderful. And I've got to tell you, That's I it. wish your book was around when I was young and my parents were going through divorce because it was awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your parents try and shield you as much as they can, but yeah, you still course. absorb all those emotions and everything else. So your yeah. book is just so enlightening and and just engaging. Um, yeah. I, I think it's it's absolutely fantastic. I hope all the schools have it in libraries, to be honest with you. But there we go. <laughs> um, we've also got some more some more comments. There we go. So we've got Cuckoo Buy House Publishers, and they say hi from Suffolk. Oh, it's Amanda. So thank you, Amanda. Hello to you, my darling. Um, we've also got Danny. Um, she's from New York. Now, Danny, I will give her a mention because on my profile recently, I shared a beautiful profile that is now on Danny's new website. It is beautiful. Um, so if you want a nice author page, everybody, um, then check out Danny's links and I'll and have a look at the mine because I recently posted it and you can have a look. So website is brilliant and she's got lots of uh, services for authors as, authors as well. Um, Liana says, LOL, I agree. I make up stories to read to jazz at night. Bessie the cow has a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and likes to bless everyone's soul. Oh, I love that, Liana. <laughs> she says, Harold the giraffe is French and likes to say wee oui, wee oui, a lot. <laughs> oh my God, I'm crying. It's so funny to make up the voices to the characters and to see Jazz laugh and get carried away with the story is one of my highlights. I'll never forget how she grows older and doesn't need me as much anymore. Oh, that's so lovely. I'm on literally on my eyes of water where I'm laughing. <laughs> we be, we be the cow. <laughs> Do you know what? I think all parents, I've got to say, I think all parents have got a storyteller in them. Yeah, absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I really do. Because I think at some point we've all run out of books or haven't been able to go to the library to get some more. And we've had to make up a story um, for our kids. <laughs> and I love, I love Leanna's. I think that's so cute. I think you've missed your calling, Leanna. I think you need to be concentrating on children's books, not adults. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Lucy says that books are a powerhouse for approaching taboos and difficult topics. Um, I couldn't agree with that more. Could you, Andy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's. I think every book's got a theme behind it. There's something that you want to put out into the world uh, and it might be hidden underneath the, the actual plot line and stuff like that but it's, it's always there um why, why else would you write a book yeah you, know, you, you you want to entertain people but you've got a message behind it same as you would in music there's always yeah. an underlying message to it um well in a, in a good book anyway i would say <laughs> yeah i agree i agree i think all, i think nearly all of the best-selling children's books are the ones that actually teach children without them even knowing it <laughs> yeah yeah well i i always go back to when i was a kid and uh, i was watching you know thundercats cartoons and he-man and things like that and there would always be a moral at the end of the story you know you look yeah. back at it now and it's cheesy as anything but you know it, it's it's you know at least you were learning something as a kid <laughs> in those days andy he-man and that was the bomb <laughs> oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm aging myself here i think <laughs> Oh, you and me both. I'm hitting the big 5 0 this year and I'm still in denial, I've got to tell you. It's crazy. Um now you've done you've done media production and yeah. you, you know you've done retail management for a long time. Um oh, yeah. do you find that those careers have actually given you an advantage in the publishing world? Yeah, de uh, definitely. I mean, in, in self-publishing, without a doubt, um, you know, I've, I've learned over the last 20 years of my life how, how to sell things to people. Um, you know, I, I work in a store and, you know, I can sell stuff in a physical environment. Um, I've just had to sort of put that online. But the, the, the processes and, and things behind the business side of things are exactly the same concepts, really. Uh, and media media side of things that's definitely definitely helped me um you know the design elements of things and yeah i, I do think because because self publishing is is i would say 50% writing 50% marketing uh it's it's a massive help it's a massive help you know i would say to anyone if they want to get into self publishing um be prepared for that that side of it things you can't just write a book and expect it to sell by itself it's it's impossible um you've got to be able to advertise work out amazon advertising facebook advertising all the other social media elements of it um they're all they're all massively important um so i think yeah my background perfect for it really yeah um, you know creatively it's as well you know i've got quite a creative side to me hence why i've written a book <laughs> I, I, you know, I think it's one of those things isn't it you you we have no idea what is involved of publishing a book until we no. actually go ahead and do it. And you're no. absolutely right. I spend probably more time promoting and doing my marketing than I do mm. actually being creative. Um, yeah. You know, which it, you know, it's a pain in the tush, but mm. it's a necessary evil, especially at the moment where we can't go out and do stuff. And actually meet readers so it's it's yeah. our only avenue but you're absolutely right because it's one of those things isn't it with anything you're selling hmm. if it's not visible people aren't going to buy it because they're not seeing it <laughs> no, no they're not they're not 
Yeah. It is a daily thing. I, I, I think, you know, the only, the main difference between physically selling stuff and selling stuff online is, is you, you can't be pushy. You can't push things in people's faces. You know, you've got to make an appearance on social media to say, you know, this is me, look at me, look, see, see who I am and, and find out a bit about me. And all the time and people getting to know you and, you know, they say the seven touches of marketing, don't they? You see something seven times and, that, and that, that's when you're in a buying state to, to go forward and actually buy something. So for me, it's not about pushing something. If people like how I am and are inspired by what my stories contain and, and the meanings behind them, then off their own back, they'll, they'll go and buy that. But it's just making sure that I'm out there in the world and, you know, flesh, flesh and everything, you know, here I am and, and if they want to buy it, great. If they don't, well, you know, I'm, yeah. not, the, I'm not talking to the right people, am I? <laughs> yeah. Well, I must admit, the one thing I did notice from your reviews is that I got a distinct impression that your reviewers hmm. were were spreading the word for you. They were so they loved the book so much, and their kids loved the book so much. Yeah. You got the impression from their reviews that they they were telling people, and I think yeah. I think as authors that's so important, isn't it? Having yeah. that word of mouth. Um, I've always said that you know you can have the best commercial, best advert going, and people will be like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm sure you know going to do that or not. But if one of their friends says, oh, you have got to check out this book, you yeah. will love it. Yeah. They're going to believe that 100, percent and you you Absolutely. can't get a better sales pitch than from somebody who's already interested in yeah. and invested in your work um yeah. i think that's absolutely fabulous um let's have a look liana says um she says ha 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 i have written one of the stories i read to jazz at night it would be fun to have someone draw the characters for me as I can only imagine, I can only manage stick figures. <laughs> That's so cute. I'm so glad you've done that, Liana. Um, I have a suggestion for you, Liana. Um, as it's a children's book, why don't you see if Jazz would like to draw the illustrations for you? Um, I think that would be fabulous. And not only that, she would tell everybody and make all of her friends buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's lovely. Um, Lucy says, any tips for writers who write regularly but don't know how to actually just get started and take a step out there? So would you have any tips for Lucy? Um, I would say just get it down on paper. Just, you know, just write until you finish. Um, it doesn't matter if it's good or, you know, don't don't keep looking back at what you've written. Just just write it down. Get an outline of a story, and once you've got that, then you can do something with it. You know, then you can sort of do a second draft, get it to an editor, and and polish it up. You know, because my story was absolutely awful. The, the first draft of it, you know, you'd have looked at it and thrown it in the bin without a doubt. I know I would have, but you know, over three, four, or five drafts, it, it develops into something different, and and. Especially if you, you spend the time going to professional editor, they see things that you wouldn't even think of. So it's, it's all a learning curve massively. You know, I wouldn't have had a, had a clue when I started. So, yeah, get it to a professional editor, get it polished up, and and then you've got something to go with. Then you can start looking at everything else. But, you know, that's that's the writing side of things. The marketing side of things, you can't start soon enough. You know, I, I think I, I set up an Instagram account as soon as I started writing. You know, I had nothing to say. Um, you know, I think one of my first pictures was just um, you know a few bubbles and outlines of, of what I was going to write with my story. Um, it'd be interesting for me to look back and actually look at that now. But you know, I didn't have a clue. So it's, even though I had nothing to show, people took an interest in the development of of you know a sheet of A4 paper into into a book. Um, you know, I've got people that were following me for, right from the start and like, wow, I can't believe that you, you've got to where you have now in, in a year's you know. So. Yeah, start start as soon as you can with it, um, yeah. and it and it doesn't cost anything at first. A couple yeah. of social media accounts, you know, whatever you, whatever you're good at. If you're good at Facebook, give it a go. If you're good at Instagram, and got a flair for pictures, do that. If you if you you know like little snappy one liners, get on Twitter. That's all you need to do, and just start building it up slowly with time, I, and yeah. you, you get somewhere with it. That's that's the way that I see it. Yeah, I I completely agree with everything you've just said. So so. That is really, really good advice for you, Lucy. Um, I think most readers love seeing 
the journey that writers go on. Um, and I think that's fabulous that you actually shared your journey right from the beginning because yeah. people do become invested and they want, you know, people want other people to do well. Um, I think that's fantastic having that following right from the start yeah. because now they've had all this time and seen you develop and all this, you know, all, all these event, writing adventures you've had. Um, yeah. And they feel part of it. Um, yeah. I think that's super important. I, on the, on the other hand, um, was hesitant because I was just so nervous about it. And I wish I'd have been more confident at the beginning. Um, but, but Lucy, Andy's completely right. Just get writing. Um, there's, there's many support groups out there. As I said, we've just, Autumn Bardo and myself just started a new one, Write Better, Author Smarter, um, for writers of all levels. So if you want to join the group and pick up lots of tips and advice, um, from us and many other authors who are who are joining in, um, we're a wealth of knowledge, and and I'm sure Andy, you'll agree. You can gain so much knowledge from authors who have already been there, done it, and got the teeth out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have done it without the authors that I've met along the way. I really couldn't. Yeah, you know, and and I've never been in a community that's been so supportive where you say, look, can, can someone help me with this? And they'll give you the time and, 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 you know, nuggets of advice. Absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I'll do the same to, to new authors now. I think that's just part and part of the community of writers. We all help each other out. You know, we're not competing with each other. We're all in it together and trying to support each other. And that, and that's, that's the greatest thing that I've learned on this journey. Really. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. I mean, it makes a nice change. Being in a community that actually build each other up instead of tearing yeah. each other down. <laughs> it's yeah. quite a, yeah. a refreshing change, that is, I can tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Leanne says, um, that's where bloggers come in to help promote books. Um, that is if Facebook <laughs> is to jail for breaching their community standards 36 times in one day for spamming. <laughs> that's so frustrating. <laughs> Oh, Leanna, you're a bad girl. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but I love your enthusiasm and the effort because she is a prolific blogger, I've got to tell you. Yeah, fantastic. He really is. Um, Lisa says, I have lots of finished work, but have no idea what to do next. Where editors hide. Um, that's a bit of a minefield, Andy, I think. Um, you have mm. to be very, very careful. And it's better to go from recommendations to be honest with you um you need to find an editor who is very good at editing your type of book you know whether it's uh, whether it be a children's book editor or whether it be um a full-on novel sci-fi whatever you need to find the right editor for you so look do lots and lots of research maybe um I, i'm sure andy will agree maybe reach out to some authors um who have already got books books published yeah. that are similar to yours and ask them who they used and would they recommend them? Um, yeah. Because, you know, they're not going to recommend somebody who's ripped them off. They're not going to recommend somebody who's bad at their job. Um, so I would reach out to authors who who have got similar books to you and find out who they use. Would you say mm -hmm. that's a good idea, Andy? Yeah, I think so. I mean, for me, I used a Readsy website, uh, which is great because there's there's loads of professionals on there and and yeah. because it's done through them you can't get ripped off it's impossible to but the way that i did it is you you put your you put like a few chapters of your manuscript on there um and then you pick and choose the the, the editors you think oh well, hang on they're, they're good at middle grade books and and, and whatever and, and you'll pick i think three three that you like and think oh yeah they'd be a nice fit and then they all sort of bid on on it um and what what they'll what they tend to do is they'll do they'll do a chapter of editing for you they'll they'll edit a chapter send it back to you like and and, and show you what kind of style they would do it um and i think through that process i sort of got an idea of whether the person would be invested in it um i mean you know editors all have different styles and but they're all of, of, a, of a standard on there you know there's a professional standard uh, that they're also sort of certified but I think the most important thing for me was that they were invested in my script and, and they sort of saw potential um, and were interested in that, you know, um, because these people, 
they're going to be brutal with the way that they speak about your, your manuscript. They're not going to be all airy-fairy. Oh, well, oh, oh, it's lovely. You know, everything's fine. It looks fantastic. You know, you've done a great draft. You know, send it out there. You've got an Amazon bestseller on your hands. They're going to be brutal. And they're going to say, that is terrible. You know, you need to ax that chapter there. You need to add more to this one here. And and it's a hard, hard thing to swallow. Um, but it's a necessary evil because it will improve your script. So yeah. you've got to find someone that's invested in it and that, you know, genuinely interested in it. Uh, but at the same time, you think you're going to get on with and you can take criticism from <laughs> because you don't half get that from an editor. Yeah. Well, maybe you, that, in my experience, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you do. If the editor's good at their job, they're going to do what's in, whatever is in the best interest of, of your book and you as a writer because you're learning every time you work with an editor you learn something new i think uh, you, yeah. you really really do that there, there's such a wealth of knowledge um and read z that's r-e-e-d-s-y read z.com um is fantastic um lucy so do check it out because um as andy said you know they are professional people they're not scammers they they have to prove themselves before they can offer their services so yeah. um it's, it's a very good recommendation it's very hard to be brutal with your own work and i think yeah. we all need that editor who will tell us what we need to know <laughs> yeah as hard as it may be <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um but lucy just so you know obviously prices do vary depending on the type of book that you're you're that you've got um, how long it is and um, and all those sort of things. So, you, you know, prices vary considerably depending on the individual pieces of work. Yeah. But, um, yeah, thank you for that, Andy. That is really, really good, excellent advice. Um, Liana says, that'd be a great idea. I might just do that. So she might get Jazz to do the illustrations. I think that would be so super cute. <laughs> and it would be an original, so you wouldn't have to pay an illustrator, Liana. You'd be saving money left, right, and center. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you consider doing the, your illustrations, um, or, no. or did you actually get an artist to do them, Andy? Yeah, not at all. Um, you know, I thought I was a bit of an artist when I was like 10 years old, but I'm certainly not now. Um, you know, middle name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know your books are your books are sold by the cover more than anything you know that, that's it's a crucial part of it so you, you definitely want to get a trained professional in there luckily my brother's girlfriend is a fantastic illustrator um and so she did the illustrations for me um wow. and, and you know she did an amazing job and it's the first book that she illustrated so i, I sort of looked at the genre i looked at what you know what style of covers were, were happening in, in the kind of books that I was writing and, and sort of took elements of that and, and, and sort of gave her my idea of how I wanted it to look and she just made it happen. You know, I, I, I visioned it like that in my head and, and, that, and she came through with it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, it pays in the long run to have a, a decent cover. Um, it really does. The, the, you see so many people that will just use an Amazon template and you can, I can spot them a mile away. And, and they look terrible. Yeah, it's, it's not costing you any money, but you're not going to sell any books that way. You're really not. If you're going to invest any money, it's editing and you cover. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and the thing is, because of your retail experience, um, and obviously mine as well, you know, we know that in sales, you only get one first impression. Yeah. And that, that first impression is your book cover. And if it yeah. doesn't grab their attention they're not going to go any further. Um, so you're absolutely right. You know, having the right book cover is super important, even down to the colours, um, because it can affect who is attracted to those cover colours. Yeah. You know, is it more male? Is it more female attracted? You know, attractive? It, is it like more neutral? All those things, all those things make a factor. And, and you can tell that you've put that thought into yours because yours are very bright primary colours with red yeah. and yellows and, and those colours are going to attract boys. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. Yeah. But, you know, you go so far as like certain genres, you, you will have certain styles of covers. You look at most thriller books and it's a person stood in the middle of like a, a street <laughs> and, and the amount of books that are exactly the same because – People pick up buying signals in their mind. You know, if they're a thriller reader and they see a cover that looks like a, a thriller book, they'll go. They'll go for that automatically. Yeah. You know, so 
you don't want to be standing out and doing something completely different. You want to be in keeping with what everyone else is doing because psychologically, people are attracted to that, which is which is crazy, really. Yeah, it really, really is. It really, really is. Um, would you mind holding your book up again? Because it's so cool. Yeah, of course. It is. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. There we go. The Super Twins. And the next one's coming out on the 24th of April. Now, yeah. for everybody who's watching, Andy has very kindly offered to do a, to give away a signed copy of the Super Twins. Um, so all you have to do is share this interview um, and you will get entered into the draw to win the, the signed copy. Um, the more times you share, the more times you get an entry. So share everywhere. You can share it in book clubs and book pages and book groups. Um, every time you share it, you will get an entry to win a signed copy. Um, so, so please, please, please do. Um, and just so everybody knows, last week's winner for Amanda Scowl, um, with her beautiful, beautiful book, with Superhero Joey, another another superhero child. I love it. I love it. <laughs> love it. Um, was actually, believe it or not, Heather Skinner. She's won it again. Um, <laughs> I know, right? She must be like, yes, woo woo. <laughs> um, but she shares a lot, so she gets more entries in because she shares. So get those uh, entries in, share lots, and we'll let you know next week who the winner is. Um, now. How on earth did you um, come, like, finally decide on the superpowers for the Super Twins? Did you have a list that you went through as to, yeah, that might be cool. Shall I do mind reading? You know, how did you yeah. come and settle on that? Yeah, I, I think you know, I looked at every super, I studied every superhero I could, and, you know, and I worked out the coolest powers. But I, I think my boys came up with them more than I said. I had the super strength and the super intelligence. Uh, as, as the as the two main ones for the for the for the boys in the story um but yeah after that it was it was, the, it was my my own twins that, that chose the powers yeah that's so lovely it really is yeah. have they have they at any point asked for the outfits they've got some outfits my mum actually made some outfits yeah yeah there's oh. pictures on, on my instagram um the problem is that they're approaching 13 now, so I don't think I can get them in, in them again for this this book. Uh, I think I'm pushing my luck a little bit, and they're probably probably be half mass pants and you know up to, up to the up to their elbows. But yeah, they have actually got the suits. <laughs> that is so cute. I mean, what amazing mementos! And the nice thing is, is that when they're older and they have children, they can pass those little outfits down, and there's a whole story and a little legacy about it. I think that's absolutely fabulous. Um, so what, what, I mean, what do your boys think about you, you know, writing and publishing books? They must feel so inspired. Yeah, you know, they tell me they're proud of me um, because they've seen it from concept to, to what it is now. So they've seen the whole journey that I've gone through, um, which I think has been really good because most of the time they've been at home while we've been doing it. You know, they've been off school with the pandemic. So for them to sit and, and, and watch me do all that, it's, it's definitely been inspiring for them. Um, it just shows them that you can do whatever you want to if you put your mind to it. You really can. You know, this time last year, I hadn't even written a book. So, and now I've got nearly two out. So, you know, and a social media following that's growing all the time. So I think, you know, it's definitely been an inspiration for them. Um, yeah. Because so many people have just sat at home and not done a lot through the pandemic. It's been very easy to, you know, eat pizza and, and watch telly, hasn't it? So to actually have something to sink my teeth into has, has kept me sane and, you know, inspired them at the same time. I think it's fabulous. I really, really do. And and not only have you inspired you, your own children, but you're an inspiration hmm. to other single dads who, who are raising children on their own. It just goes to show that, you know, you can still achieve your dreams. You you still yeah. can have a new career path if you want to have it. Um, it's just a case of of knuckling down and believing in yourself and and yeah. going for it. So I, I think you and your boys are inspirational. Um, okay. Now tell me, it obviously you've got the new book coming out in in yeah. April twenty fourth, um, mm -hmm. which is the Super Twins two. Are you going to try and continue the series and, and do more books? 
for now i'm leaving it as a twin pack so I'm just gonna have two books um if i've got a massive surge of people that are begging me to bring out another one then i could consider it but at the moment the super twins is staying at just two books um I, i'm going to move on to something different i think oh um, that sounds yeah. exciting so what, what are you thinking about doing next I, I'm not 100% yet. Yeah. I'm not 100%. I'm, I'm throwing loads of ideas around in my head, but nothing concrete. I think I, one day I'm just going to sit down. Once I, once this is released and I can breathe a sigh of relief, um, I think I'll just sit down and just start writing and see what happens. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's the best way. And, you know, whatever comes out, comes out. It could be something completely different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know what? It's, it's funny you say that, and, and I think you're absolutely right because um, – especially nowadays there are so many authors out there that aren't just pigeonholed into one thing you know you yeah. take Nora Jones for example I mean she she does romance she does dystopian fiction you know yeah. she's done all sorts of books um all under the one name so so I think everything has opened up for us authors right now where yeah. we don't, you know, we don't have to be stuck to one genre or age group. We can, mm. especially self-publishing, we can do whatever we like. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. It really, really is. And and you know, I my my journey was a bit of a surprise, to say the least. Um, and I had no intention of writing children's books at all. But um, when a publishing house, uh, when a yeah a publishing house reached out to me and said, "Would you?" Be interested in writing an anthology for a children's story i was like oh i'm not sure <laughs> i did it and and since then i've I, i'm on the last book of a whole series yeah so it's took taken me on a completely new new you know venture um yeah. for a totally different age group so i'm excited to see what you do next andy yeah well i'm excited to see myself <laughs> it's cool um uh, uh, I mean, most of us authors are avid readers. What sort of books do you personally like to read? Uh, I think in the last six months, it's been anything to do with writing. <laughs> uh, you know, it's been how, how to how to do how to write a book, <laughs> how to how to structure my ads, how to do my marketing. So I, I've read a lot of books like that. Not so much fiction. Um, I, the the fiction that I tend to read is stuff with the kids. Um, you know, we'll read stories together and stuff like that. So, yeah, that tends to be the you know the the fiction that I read. But you know, that's the fiction I should be reading if I'm, I'm writing kids' stories. You know, I need to see what's out there. Uh, I think you know we've been through every David Williams book under the sun. We've we've got on to a lot of Philip Pullman type stuff. So like Amber Spyglass and things like that. We read The Hunger Games together, which I absolutely loved. Um, those are, those are the kind of books I've been reading recently. And like I say, a lot of books on, I've just read, uh, well, I'm just in the process of reading uh, Save the Cat, which is like a a book on writing. Um, so, yeah, just just a, a wide berth of stuff. Um, you never know. I, I might pick up different fiction once, once I've uh, got this project out of the way. But at the moment, it's, it's mainly kids' books. Big kid, really, I think. <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? Aren't we all? Yeah. I've got to yeah. say, I was a bigger Harry Potter fan, I think, than my children. <laughs> yeah, I did. I loved reading those. We we read we read each book and then watched the film. So after each one, and went through the whole series like that. It was brilliant. <laughs> oh, I absolutely loved it. We, we was in um, we were in France on vacation when when the yeah. last book came out, and I was devastated because I couldn't get it before we went, and because I wanted yeah. to read that on vacation. Well, yeah. my husband, who I absolutely adore, bless him, he went round at like the whole area where we were in France and managed to find me an English copy of the book. And I was like, yes, <laughs> oh, I love you. And then he handed it to me and said, oh, by the way, he dies. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, Thanks for ruining that gesture. And he, he just walked away with a big smirk on his face. I devoured the last one. Um, yeah. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed reading those with the children. I think having that time with your kids and reading with them is such a special time, isn't it? Especially yeah. when they 
uh, when they start being able to read themselves and can actually join in and yeah. the funny the, the funny voices and stuff and um i think that's one of the real perks of actually being a parent is yeah. that special bonding time with your children uh, i think it's absolutely wonderful and and from your perspective the thought of your boys reading your books to their children in the future wow i think that's yeah. just wonderful yeah no that'd be an amazing thing wouldn't it, it really would yeah you know, because hopefully you know i've cultivated a, a lifelong love of reading with the with the lads you know it's it's so important isn't it for, well for me i think i think it's one of the most important things it helps them in all aspects of life um really does yeah yeah Sparks My, the imagination. Oh, absolutely. I can't remember who it was who told me, but somebody told me, um, you're never lonely or bored if you've got a book. Yeah. And I think that's so true. I really, really do. Because I think what I think children benefit from being able to enjoy their own company. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Being able to just mm. have chill out time to themselves, reading a book or listening to music anything that they you know that that makes them comfortable in their own company and not dependent constantly on having people around them yeah. um, I, th I think that's fabulous um do you have any plans to uh, to do any like library readings or anything like that i'd love to uh, yeah i'd love to do stuff like that and book fairs and, and yeah absolutely I, i've just not had the opportunity I, you know i've been a I've not. I've only been writer in a pandemic, so it's it's been a bit difficult from that sort of thing. But it'd be great to get out there and, you know, it's okay getting reviews and stuff from kids, uh, and that's fantastic to see. But to actually see and engage children's reactions to my books is 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 the most important thing, you know. So to get out there, uh, yeah, I, I'd I'd love that so much. I really would. Yeah. So that's... hopefully, hopefully it'll happen soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh, my no. gosh. It might be worth you actually reaching out to some local um, libraries and stuff um, yeah. or, or even have a look at their pages, because a lot of them have Facebook pages and stuff nowadays. Um, there's two or three that I keep sharing that are literally doing book readings yeah. um, for the kids via their pages. So it might be worth you having a look, see if any of them are, and then reaching out and saying, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or you can read definitely. mine. You can read mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it? As an author, especially self-published like we are, um, you know, you have to be you. You have to take a breath and sell yourself and sell your books yeah. um, because nobody's going to do it for you. You just got to yeah. do it yourself, <laughs> haven't you? And that, yeah. and that's something we've. I think we've both learned. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. I've got some more comments. So keep them coming in. We are coming towards the end, everybody. So if you've got questions, now is the time. Um, so let's have a look. All right. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh, Liana says, are your books available to buy on Amazon, Andy? They are indeed, yes. Just just tap in the Super Twins and it should pop up. I'd, I'd like to think so. There's, there's yeah. not so many Super Twins out there. I I've actually attached all your links, including your Amazon links and everything, to the actual interview. So if you do want to buy Andy's books and 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 have a look at the, the details for the next one coming out, um, the links are all there. Make sure you leave a review, please. Um, um, I think one of them is your Amazon um, link for it. So so you can go straight straight to that. Um, let's have a look. Um, so, oh, Natalie's, Natalie's has joined us. She says, go you. Oh, oh that is lovely. Thank you, darling. Um, and Liana says, Jazz's favourite book right now is Wonky Donkey. Oh, my God. Liana, I've seen so many videos of people trying to read that to their kids, <laughs> and they are just dying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I would, do you know what? I would, I would love to have had the hat book when my kids were little i'm assuming you've read it yourself andy yeah i've, I've seen the videos absolutely hilarious you've definitely got to check if you haven't seen that you've got to you've got to look it up <laughs> oh my God. i think the best one was his grandma did you see that one the grandma with the look yeah. she was literally just crying trying to read the wonky donkey oh my gosh 
I, I, I was laughing so hard I could barely breathe at the time. It was hilarious. Um, I, and I have to say, there's been a few children's books that I've seen that should never have been published. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought that were rather risque. Obviously, it goes way over the kids' heads, but oh my, yeah. I'm like, no, seriously, how did that happen? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, and Liana says, she says, reading with the kids is one of my favorite things to do because it opens up communication between you and them to discuss what they liked and didn't like. And it's something that they will remember when they are older and cherish their memories. Um, I think she's absolutely spot on there, Andy. I really do. And it's it's funny because my, my, my children are, are obviously a lot older than yours. Mine are all in their 20s and making me feel very old. Um, but they've actually said to me, you know, since they've grown up, that they loved that time. They yeah. loved, you know, the reading, the going out and doing day trips and camping and everything else. And I know you do a lot of outdoor activities with your boys, don't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's lovely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important to get them outside. You know, it's it's too easy in this day and age for kids just to jump on a computer and play on PlayStation all day. And, and you know, there's times when my kids end up doing that. But, you know, as much as possible, I like to get out in the fresh air doing stuff and, you know, experiencing the world, <laughs> which yeah. is something that, you know, something that we, has been stripped away in a lot of senses from us at the moment. But, you know, it, it's so important to do that with kids. It really is. Yeah. It, it, it absolutely is. Some of my best memories as a child was making dens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know, doing something stupid with an um, action man tank, you know, yeah. trying to ride on it and stuff. You know, I used to have a blast when I was a kid. I was never in, in the house, stuck in, unless no. it was really, really bad. But you're right, nowadays it's sort of a fine balancing act, isn't it, between the stuff that they're into and their friends are into, but still getting them out and doing creative stuff. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's, a, it's a fine balance. It really is. Um, Craig says, all right, mate, you've definitely improved from small pain from our uni days. Um, are you thinking of writing any books for adults in the future? Oh, good question, Craig. I, th I think it's, uh, it definitely would happen. Um, but I think, as Craig would know, it'd have to be under a different name. Uh, it probably wouldn't be suitable for children. I couldn't put it under Andy Slingo, I don't think, if I was doing adult books. <laughs> well, do you know what? Um, you say that. However, you know, when you think about it, there are quite a number of authors that do different age groups, like yeah. adults and children, and, and they keep the same name. And yeah. I think if you've, you know, if you've developed the following... Um, then why not? As long as you're well, absolutely clear what's for who. Um, yeah. Myself, I've got my books in adult editions, and then I've got my same sci-fi books in young adult editions. Yeah. Um, and I did that purposefully so adults can read the same book as their kids yeah. in a safe way without the parents missing out and whether and you know they can engage in conversation afterwards. Um, yeah. And obviously, come October, I'll be releasing the, you know, young children's fantasy stories under the same name. So I'm like, I, I'm just going to break all the rules. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm self-published. I can do what I like. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's a lot. I think it's a lot easier for, especially for self-published authors. I think it's a lot easier if you've already got a reading, ba a reader base, hmm. to build from that. Yeah. Because if they love one set of books for one age group, if they love those and you come out with something new for a different age group or for adults, yeah, they're already invested in you and they're already going to mm. be recommending them, you you know, your books, their friends. They, these kids' books are fantastic. If, if these adult books are just as good, you definitely need to read them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So in yeah. a way, you're sort of, you know, you're making the most of, of that connection with them. But it's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. You, sometimes you've just got to break the rules or bend them a little bit, I think. Oh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chan says, you are doing great. Uh, the, 
round of applause. And <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. Andy, you've been an absolute diamond to talk to. It's been so fantastic. I'm super, super excited about you know your new book coming out uh, on the 24th of April. Um, so it's going to be super the Super Twins two. Um, so please make sure everybody that you buy book one and do the pre order for book two and, and get in there um, because they are fantastic books. They really, really are. And and let's face it, all the kids need a bit of enlightenment and, and a fun read right now. Absolutely. <laughs> really, really Andy, thank you so much for joining me, darling. I really hope that you will come back in the future with with more books and, yeah, and absolutely. more stories and everything. And I'm, obviously, I know you boys are in bed because it's very late where you are right now. Um, yeah. But give them a hug from us. Will do. <laughs> thank and you very I, much. And I really, really can't wait to see what the future holds for you. You've been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, been a pleasure. You are so welcome. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to share, share, share Andy's interview um, so you get entries into the giveaway to win a signed free copy of, if you can hold it up again, Andy. The Super Twins. The Super <laughs> Twins, um, which your children will love. So, so share, 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 and you could win a signed copy um, just for your child or um, a child relative. Um, so, yes, let's let's get sharing. Um, and thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. If you've joined us late, you can still leave comments and stuff. If Andy doesn't mind, keep tabs of the comments for the next week, just in case you get any more questions, etc. And um, thank you, darling. And we will see you next week for the Witty Writer Show. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye, Andy. Bye. Thank you. Bye.